So let's take a look at some typical values and trends for viscosity um, for different types of fluids and as a function of temperature. Um, I think let's start with liquids. They're the easiest to understand, I think. Um, so I think, you know, it, if I'm thinking about the resistance to flow as a surrogate for the viscosity, meaning that like things that have high viscosity are things that don't flow very much, um, you know, so um, liquids tend to have a much higher viscosity than gases, several orders of magnitude at room temperature anyway. Um, and if I think about fluids or if I think about liquids um, in particular, you probably have some experience with like really viscous materials like oils and things. And you probably, you might know that um, when you raise the temperature of a fluid, it actually flows more easily. So think of honey, um, for example, if I have some honey um, or syrup, it barely flows, but if I heat it up, it, it flows much more easily. Um, it turns out that for liquids, viscosity um, decreases exponentially as you raise the temperature. And in fact, that's a really good way, you know, if you have something that doesn't flow um, when you, you know, you know, try to pump it or move it or whatever, um, heating it up is usually a really good sort of engineering move um, to make very um, viscous substances flow. Gases, um, on the other hand, are a little bit non-intuitive. The, um, the viscosity of gases actually goes up as the square root of temperature. And you can actually show that um, exactly using so the so-called kinetic theory of gases. So I'll, I'll see if I can explain why that is in the next slide. Um, it also turns out that the viscosity decreases for smaller molecular weight. So if you want something that flows really easily, you go to the latest thing on the periodic table, which is hydrogen. So um, hydrogen, ha hydrogen and helium actually have pretty comparable molecular weights and they have pretty um, comparable um, viscosities. Um, interestingly enough, if you're curious, it turns out that viscosity does not depend on the pressure of a gas basically up until the point where it's not an ideal gas anymore. Um, so for ideal gases, it turns out that the like the viscosity is independent of pressure. So if you were thinking about trying to pull vacuum on a, um, if you're trying to thinking about pulling vacuum, for example, on a gas to try and make it less viscous, that actually won't work. Um, there's a little asterisk that I would put next to that. Um, which is if you actually pump out enough gas that the gas molecules no longer hit each other, but instead the gas molecules hit the um, side of like whatever your container is more often than they hit each other, then eventually that will work. But you actually have to pull a pretty high vacuum before you can reduce the viscosity of gases that way because viscosity doesn't depend on pressure for gases. Um, so um, the one thing that I would point out is that you, you might actually, so if you look at, I have a graph over here of viscosity versus temperature. And if you're an intelligent person, you might actually um, recognize something weird, which is that on this curve, oil actually has a lower viscosity than water, which um, is actually, it is true, but only by, you know, there's an asterisk there, which is that that's actually for crude oil, which is unprocessed oil, um, which has a whole bunch of other stuff mixed in it. Oils, like processed oils and like the things that you would use as lubricants actually have extremely high viscosity. So this can be a little bit of a misleading um, curve or uh, yeah, it's a misleading curve. Okay, so let me just talk a little bit about like the microscopic physics of viscosity. Like why does viscosity exist and what does it actually mean? Um, okay, so think about what you know Newton's law of viscosity said. What it said is that if I have two adjacent layers and one of them is faster than